Triton is the largest moon of Neptune, and it is in general a large moon. It is larger than the dwarf planet Pluto. Triton is similar in surface area to the continent of North America. It is quite an interesting moon, and for that reason, there is a mission planned by NASA to send a lander on Triton. But this is not like any other lander. This one will hop on the surface of Triton. So, first of all, NASA would need to get the Triton. And this will really not be much of a problem, since Voyager 2 already visited Triton back in 1989. And Voyager 2 needed 12 years to get to Triton, going at the speed that is 47 times faster than a shot bullet. But the same thing is perfectly achievable with today's technology, so Triton Hopper would need around 10 years to get to Neptune. Still, Neptune and Triton are very far away from Earth. They are on average 30 times further away from the Sun than the Earth. So, when the lander arrives and lands on the surface of Triton, what will it do? Well, it will live up to its name Hopper, as it will hop from the surface and use its engine to fly. It is planned to do that several times during the mission. The idea behind the whole Hopper concept is to use nitrogen ice that is on the surface to propel the engine, meaning it will produce its own energy. And nitrogen ice is very common on Triton. More than half of the whole surface is composed by nitrogen. Now, its engine with through the decay of radioactive elements and heat produced from that decay use that energy to mine some nitrogen ice, melt it and use it as a propellant so that it could be launched again from Triton's surface. Basically, it would be like a little rocket. Now, the reason Triton is the goal here is because, well, the whole place is so alive. It is geologically active, meaning its surface is always changing and, in a way, moving like the Earth's surface. So its surface is very young. There are almost no visible craters, which cannot be seen on many moons. But also, it is the only other moon besides Titan that has an atmosphere. That is, it is still very thin, but also significant. Still, it is 70,000 times less dense than the Earth's atmosphere. But it is more dense than Pluto's atmosphere. So what Triton Hopper will do while it is in the air is that it will analyze the composition of the atmosphere and will also analyze the composition of the clouds that are present there. Which also, it is pretty amazing to find clouds on a moon. Now, most likely it will fly over cryovolcanoes and there are several of them on Triton. When it lands and waits, maybe we will even get a chance to look at an eruption that went on. It will be likely the first time we are going to take a look at a cryovolcano erupting. We could see cold material launched several kilometers into the sky, and Triton Hopper will get to analyze the composition of the material that is spewed. If we collect enough data about cryovolcanoes, it would also be possible for Triton Hopper to get into the other region of Triton, the Cantaloupe area, which is completely different from the relatively flat area that cryovolcanoes are in. As it will fly over the region, it will get very detailed, up-close pictures of huge ridges and depressions that are several kilometers wide and deep, and they would be covering the whole site. We would be most likely looking at one of the most amazing sceneries in our solar system. Not only that, but Triton Hopper would also have a chance to capture other part of Triton that Voyager 2 did not even get a glimpse of. Who knows what is in that region? So that is all a likely possibility as to what will Triton Hopper get to explore. But still, first we have to get the mission going. As of right now, status of the mission changed from Phase 1 to Phase 2 in NASA. So this is getting more attention, but it is not guaranteed that Triton Hopper will ever get a chance to visit Triton. We have no date for it. For that reason, we should talk about it more and get people excited, and maybe NASA will see the reaction and we'll get on to making the whole thing.